Hello, everyone. It's me, nurse practitioner, Dr. Katina. If you're just now following me, make sure you follow me on uh, YouTube, Dr. Katina. You may see some videos that I've produced over the years that may be that may pertain to you. Also, follow me on IG, Dr. Katina underscore Dr. K. All right. So I am here today. I know you all have been waiting on it. Um, for all my followers out there, my fans, you all know that I am known for breaking things down. So I am creating this video today to talk about the coronavirus. I'm going to break it down for you all. So the coronavirus is a, a virus. You all have heard about the coronavirus. Uh, it's that virus that's been out for years and years. However, we aren't talking about that. We're talking about the novel coronavirus. This is a new one. This one is a virus that over the since December has gone from an animal to animal transmission to an animal to human and now a human to human transmission. So it's scary for a lot of the scientists because it's mutating very, very fast. This is a virus that was only found in animals. Now, there are many different theories out there how it got from um, an animal to now uh, transmitting to humans. Uh, you have, they say, in Wuhan, China, which is where it originated. They're saying that because they eat a lot of those, um, you know, weird different type of uh, uh, animals such as bats and so forth. They say it may have been transmitted that way. Uh, we have some theories about the 5G theory. They say once they uh, put up that 5G and, and, and put it into play, the virus started spreading then. We don't know. You know, we don't know. There are developments going on every day. Uh, scientists are developing new things daily. Um, however, what we do know is this is a fast, fast, fast mutating new virus that's out there that was only human to human, animal to animal, and now and then animal to humans, and now it's spreading from humans to humans. So that's why it's scary. That's why it's scary. And this virus is actually attacking the lungs of humans. Yes, it's attacking the lungs. That's why many people are having respiratory symptoms when they get this virus. So we'll talk about those symptoms later. How is it spread? It's actually spread through respiratory droplets. And I'm getting all this information from the CDC. So if you need to clear up something, you go to the cdc.gov and you'll find this information. Um, but they say respiratory th droplets. However, again, remember I told you that there are different developments going on daily. They are now saying it's it, uh, transmitted through the air. Yes, that means that when someone coughs or sneeze, it just disperses throughout the air. And they're saying it kind of lays around in the air for about three hours. So again, it's different research going on, but we know that it's transmitted uh, through respiratory droplets and um, also through aerosol, through the air. All right. So some of the signs and symptoms, you have your mild to severe respiratory uh, illness, such as like fever, uh, cough and difficulty breathing. So I, I work in urgent care and I have a lot of patients that are coming in with body aches, sore throat. They do have the cough and the fever. Now, each person presents differently when they get uh, this novel coronavirus. Yes, they do. Some people have very mild symptoms. Some people ha don't have symptoms at all. You see a lot of these celebrities with the symptoms and they're talking, they're doing fine. Um, however, we have to rule out the flu when you come in. Yes, yes, because it could be the flu as well. And a lot of times, if you do have sore throat or body aches, mm, they say, according to the CDC, it's not the coronavirus. Usually the coronavirus, the novel coronavirus, you only have cough, fever, and difficulty breathing or respiratory, shortness of breath, respiratory symptoms. Um, so a lot of you all are going to these drive throughs to get tested. You're going to your healthcare provider, get tested. If you have any of the symptoms, you're not going to fit that criteria for testing, unfortunately. The CDC, uh, the government does not have that many testing capabilities that are out there. But over the past weeks, they have increased the number of testing abilities, which is good. So with the increased testing ability, guess what? 
there is increased testing going on. So there are going to be more um, positive COVID-19 findings out there. Now, if you think that you've been exposed to someone who has COVID, you want to make sure that you actually get tested. But don't go get tested right away. You have to quarantine yourself and it has to be between 2 to 14 days. That's when the actual they say they tell you to quarantine yourself for 14 days, but symptoms may not occur until 2 to 14 days of exposure after exposure to the novel coronavirus. So don't go right away the day after to get tested. It's not going to show up. Uh, you have to quarantine yourself. Um, be careful. Stay indoors and um, you'll go get tested. But that's only if you were exposed. All right. So two to 14 days after exposure. That's why they tell you all, because you may or may not get it, especially my healthcare providers who are who are doing what they're supposed to do. They have their gowns on, protective, protect, personal protective equipment on. Um, you know, you may not get it, but because you were exposed, um, you do want to get tested just to make sure so that it's not passed on. Now, what are some things you can do? Some things that you can do. Six feet. I know you all have been hearing this. You want to stay six feet apart, <laughs> away from someone, um, because they say that when someone coughs or sneeze, you know, it can transmit at least uh, six feet. And again, research is changing. Wash your hands with soap and water uh, daily, all the time, as many times as you can throughout the day uh, for 20 seconds. You don't just want to, you know, wash it right away. No. You want to take your time, wash your hands with soap and water for 20 seconds. If you don't have soap and water, they say that's the best way. Uh, however, if you don't have soap and water, you do want to use hand sanitizer, but the hand sanitizer has to have at least 60% af of alcohol in it. So look on your hand sanitizer and make sure it has that. Also, if you're a healthcare provider, gown up, glove up, wear your face shield, Wear your N95 mask. Yeah, they're saying use bandanas. That's not going to protect us. It's just not. So hopefully, you know, they have something uh, better regarding this, this N95, this bandana mess that they have going on because we have to be protected. We're actually on the front line as healthcare providers. I'm glad at my facility, we are actually, uh, we, we're stocked up. I work in urgent care. My manager makes sure we have everything. <laughs> so that's a good thing to know that your employer cares about you. Um, also, if you are sick and you sneeze or cough, keep a tissue around you so you can sneeze or cough in the tissue. I know many of you all were taught to sneeze in your arm. Uh, if you don't have a tissue around, uh, you sneeze in your arm. Yes, that stops it from transmitting through the air. Um, but you want to make sure you wash that area with soap and water and um, or hand sanitizer if you don't have it of soap and water available. But soap and water is the best thing that you can do. All right. So that's the gist of it. I just wanted to give you all a breakdown on, you know, this this coronavirus, this novel.